band in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, an island with a medical tradition that can be traced back some 500 years. During the First World War, Malta earned the name the Nurse of the Mediterranean, with over 100,000 injured soldiers from all over the world pouring into her overflowing hospitals. Behind me is the jetty and lift shaft that carried wounded soldiers up to Biggie Naval Hospital. And just arriving at this point was something of a feat of survival. The hospital ships had to avoid German submarines and mines. And then there was infectious disease, which in the cramped confines of the boat ran rife. Arriving on dry land would have come as a huge relief. But for many, the ordeal was just beginning. Malta was well situated to receive Allied casualties from the Turkish battlefields in Gallipoli and Salonika. But they were hundreds of miles away and it would take a week-long voyage by sea to reach there. But this was war on an industrial scale, with numbers of injured that no one had seen before. By the end of the war, there were 27 hospitals with over 25,000 beds filled with servicemen. And it was here at the Biggie Naval Hospital that the most serious casualties were received. Trooper Robert Hugh Martin was shot through the heart in Salonika on his 21st birthday on the 14th of November, 1917. The, the bullet was um, thought to be located in his heart and surgery was planned a month later, at which point Charles Balance actually removed the bullet from the inside of his right ventricle. So he prepared himself for this event by arranging for a direct blood transfusion from another man at the time. And in fact, the operation had to be finished quickly because the blood donor actually collapsed. Malta, 30th of January, 1918. Dear Lily, I hope you are well. I am fine. I sent Herbert a letter. This hospital is where I have put the X. We have a capital view. Please give them all a kiss from me. I will write again soon. Your loving brother, Bob. It was a very adventurous procedure, but great success. Sadly though, a month later, Trooper Martin died of sepsis, which was very common in this pre-antibiotic era. Despite the limitations of medicine before antibiotics, in other ways, Malta was the ideal place to recuperate. In Malta, they went out of their way to look after the patients in their care. In 1915, they went so far as to build this, Australia Hall, a place of amusement for the convalescing servicemen. Walking into the building in 1916 to attend an event here would have been really quite exciting. Uh, you come into a house that is packed to the rafters with 1,600 people. There was a lush curtain, um, footlights. It was a, a fully-fledged theater, essentially. During the First World War, a lot of psychological conditions that had to do with being at the front were not recognized yet, such as shell shock and soldiers deserting the front. So to offer distraction and to help with the healing process overall, it was very important to have venues like the Australia Hall. There's a difficult truth to face with what happened here in Malta during World War I. Medicine found itself profoundly out of step with the horrors that modern machines of warfare could bring. Nevertheless, what was achieved here is simply remarkable. And despite the scale of the challenge, many thousands, if not tens of thousands of Allied soldiers came to owe their lives to the nurse of the Mediterranean. land in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, an island with a medical tradition that can be traced back some 500 years. During the First World War, Malta earned the name the Nurse of the Mediterranean, with over 100,000 injured soldiers from all over the world pouring into her overflowing hospitals. Behind me is the jetty and lift shaft that carried wounded soldiers up to Biggie Naval Hospital. And just arriving at this point was something of a feat of survival. The hospital ships had to avoid German submarines and mines. And then there was infectious disease, which in the cramped confines of the boat ran rife. Arriving on dry land would have come as a huge relief. But for many, the ordeal was just beginning. 
Malta was well situated to receive Allied casualties from the Turkish battlefields in Gallipoli and Salonika. But they were hundreds of miles away and it would take a week-long voyage by sea to reach there. But this was war on an industrial scale, with numbers of injured that no one had seen before. By the end of the war, there were 27 hospitals with over 25,000 beds